All right, so here are 10 super scenic driving destinations in California that you should be adding to your next road trip. All these locations are doable as a day trip, but you might want to plan at least for about a weekend just to kind of get a better experience of the area. All right, so starting off at number one is my personal favorite, Death Valley National Park. Entrance fee is $30 per vehicle for a day, or you can get the annual pass for $55. Dante's Peak is definitely worth a check out. It kind of overlooks the entire Badwater Basin area. But also if you're a Star Wars fan, it's some of the movie shots were actually filmed from this area. And next up in the park has gotta be Zabriskie Point. It's basically remnants of water erosion formed millions of years ago. And it's really hard to put a scale on it until someone's walking down within them. All right, heading even further into the park, you are now entering below sea level zone. I just love the vast landscape that this place offers with the mountains in the background, but then you have this wide open desert and you might even meet some of the local wildlife. This coyote ended up coming straight up to the car. It was maybe 10 feet away from us at one point. Super friendly, super chill dude. Just came over to check out, see who we were, and then was on its way. Next point of interest in the park has gotta be Badwater Basin. This place sits 282 feet below sea level. It is the lowest point in North America, and in the white area you see us walking on is actually salt. This remnant of a dried up lake bed where it's actually the salt coming up through the ground and as it accumulates it makes these crazy patterns and for any of you photographers out there this is an amazing landscape opportunity you might want to walk out as far as you can just to get away from footprints and the crowds but it's totally worth it and heading even further into the park another top spot has got to be the mesquite sand dunes everyone seems to go to the biggest dunes but you can find complete solitude out there if that's more your thing you can definitely do that where the only footprints you'll see are the ones you just left All right, and number two on the list, sticking to the desert again, we are going to Joshua Tree National Park. So instead of a day pass, you actually get $30 for the week for Joshua Tree entrances, and that goes for cars and motorcycles. If you're an individual walking into the park or even bike riding, $15 is your fee. The trees are what really make this park special as there's such a concentrated amount of them all within this area. The landscape is amazing as well to drive through, and if you want to do any sort of Milky Way photography, it makes for really, really unique landscapes for foreground shots. Unless you're a rock climber, I didn't really find too much to do in this park, to be honest, but driving through it was amazingly scenic nonetheless. Number three on the list, we're going to be heading up into the mountains a little bit at Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon. The entrance fee for Sequoia and Kings Canyon is $35 per vehicle, and I ended up going in the wintertime. You don't need to have chains on your tires in the wintertime, but you do need to have them in your vehicle. I ended up having to buy some from a local restaurant down at the bottom, and I was able to return them for a small discount. The roads can be a little bit slick, but really not too bad, especially if you're used to driving in the snow. But driving among some of the biggest trees in the world is just incredible. And the home to General Sherman, which is the biggest tree on earth. And walking among these amazing giants really puts a perspective on how small we actually are. Okay, this is cool. And sometimes if you're lucky enough, you might get that cloud inversion layer right at sunset, which totally transforms the landscape and makes you feel like you're somewhere else. All right, so number four on the list, continuing more north, you're going to hit Yosemite National Park. If you haven't heard of this place before, you should probably look it up. It's amazing. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, so number five on the list is gonna be heading a little bit inland towards Redwoods State Park and National Park areas. Redwoods was actually more just a pass through on my way up to Oregon, but I really want to go back to this spot. Just even driving through this area is incredible. You're surrounded by the Redwoods. Most of the time is draped in fog, giving you this amazing lighting and the roads are windy and really fun to drive through. 
For any of you adventurers out there, this place apparently hosts the most amount of sightings of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. So you'll find a lot of shops with souvenirs and memorabilia that they can sell you. I was in a tree. Things are huge. All right, so coming in at number six, we've now hit the coast and we are in Big Sur, California. Big Sur has got to be one of my absolute favorites. The jaw-dropping scenes as you drive along the coast, the viewpoints are spectacular. And there's so much diversity in the landscape and terrain where you get anything from tropical all the way up to your pine tree forests. One place that really stood out to me though was McQuay Falls. I'd highly recommend making the stop off at this area. It's free to park and if you can get there around sunset, the views are absolutely stunning. Just as a sign of precaution, you can't actually go down on the beach, it is blocked off. But sitting up at the viewpoint is well worth it instead. I don't think you could get better views at the beach. All right, number seven, we're staying along the coast, but heading south towards Seal Beach. Sleeping lazy seals, what's not to like? You'll find a ton of these guys at the beach. It's free to park. And as long as you could deal with the odd snorts and burps every once in a while, these guys are pretty cute. Number eight, also along the Pacific Coast Highway, Bixby Bridge. Nothing really too much here. The parking is free, but it's just a cool stop off point. You get a really cool view of the coastline and this amazing suspension bridge gapping between the two mountains. And coming in at number nine on the list, El Matador Beach, Malibu. This is a really cool spot right off the road. There is a small fee for parking, but parking is usually readily available. And there's so many little caves and grottos you can kind of explore in and out of. Just be wary of the tide changes so you don't get stuck like we did. And wrapping it up at number 10, the most urban destination of all these places, Santa Monica, California. I know this is the most urban of the bunch, but it really is a scenic spot. Especially along the pier, and if you get a nice sunset, you get the entire coastline in the background, as well as all the activities you can do in the area. All right, so that's the wrap up on these 10 amazing places that you should check out on your next road trip. Like I said, you can do them in a day trip, but you might want to plan for a weekend on these places. Or you might just want to do the whole loop and make it one huge road trip. The choice is up to you. Anyways, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.